have a finite existence, a set number of days. Don't waste your life getting caught in the net, as when the end comes, nothing's worse than regret. I am guilty too of being part of this machine, this digital world we are heard but not seen, where we type as we talk and we read as we chat, where we spend hours together without making eye contact. So don't give in to a life where you follow the hype. Give people your love. Don't give them your like. That's a clip from Look Up, a short film from London writer Gary Turk, and it's become a video wake-up call of sorts, shared by millions with loved ones like spouses, teens, or friends who are always on their smartphone. My next guest says the video's moving message is one we all need to hear. It's a reminder to recognize and manage technology overload. Studio 5 contributor and therapist Julie Hanks is here with five ways to get a grip on our digital devices so we can connect in real life. Ways. Julie, it's good to see you. Good to see you. I acknowledged this at the beginning of the show. It seems like we've had this conversation at least a dozen times, and we know. We know at the end of the day we need to replace those screens with real people, but do we really understand, do you think, the human cost? No, and I don't think we need to, re let me reframe that. We don't need to replace the screens with real people. The screens are here to stay and there are so many great things about technology. So this isn't about like technology is bad because I love technology. It's about not allowing it to creep so far into our lives that we're missing out on the real relationships. But it can have, and we say technology isn't bad and yes, 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 we know it has good purposes. It can have really negative effects though, is that fair? It can, yeah, if we let it take over and instead of us managing the technology. So yeah, it can, definitely. And it seems technology has quite a way of taking over there. Can you compare it to any other distraction or hobby or whatever you want to call it? What is it about technology that seems to get in there and take such a hard hold? It's, it's so accessible. It's in our pockets, it's in our hands. And we use it, we, I mean, I read books on mine, I, I work on mine, so mm -hmm. it just kind of is this thing, like smartphones, I mean, I do everything on my smartphone yeah, now, yeah. right? Text the kids, come up for dinner, you know? <laughs> so it's just so accessible. Um, and again, that's, I, that's so good, there's so many good things that come out of it, and yet we need to be in charge of the amount of information that we are allowing into our uh, into our lives and into our relationships. You brought our attention to that compelling video, Look Up, by mm -hmm. Gary Turk. It really has a powerful Isn't message. <laughs> There's a clip there that specifically talks to parents, yeah. too. Let's take a listen. We're surrounded by children who, since they were born, have watched us living like robots and think it's the norm. It's not very likely you'll make world's greatest dad if you can't entertain a child without using an iPad. Hmm. You're not going to be world's greatest dad if you can't entertain a child without using an iPad. Why do you like this message so much? I like this message so much because I needed to hear it. I, like I said, I love technology. I'm a high-tech user. Somebody was at my house going, oh, wow, there's so many devices on your airdrop here. I'm like, yeah, let's see. We, I have two iPads, a laptop, a desktop. We have several. You know? uh -huh, so uh -huh. it's not bad. Um, but I needed... So my mantra the last couple of weeks since I saw that video has been look up. And look, and you know, I'm sitting there watching TV with my kids, answering email, and I'm like, look up. Okay, at least I can put my arm around my child, put down my phone, mm -hmm, talk mm -hmm. about what we're seeing. So I needed to hear it, that's why I liked it. Well, I love the advice you're sharing today. It's very practical, it's very put it into use now in our yeah. daily lives. First, you want us to master our device settings. How can we set up our phone to better help with this yeah. issue? Yeah, so it's not just phones, it's also computers, TV. You, most devices now have times where it will turn off. Like you can no longer use the computer after 11 o'clock or um, the, and there's some child settings like on TV where so, so many hours and it's off. So I really, I think we don't use those enough to okay. kind of okay. build in um, boundaries uh -huh. and the devices can actually help us do that. What about the notifications? You get an email and you hear that <laughs> ping and immediately your eyes glaze over and you're like shaking to get your hand on the phone. I know, I know. And then social media, right? So what people don't often realize is that the default settings on social media are, are high contact, high notification because that's, that's what they want. They want you to be engaging with their app, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. You can turn those off. You can turn off the email notifications. You can turn off the sounds when you get an email. You can turn off the push notifications, so it only checks for email once an hour. Um, you can turn off the little thing that says, oh, you have one new Facebook, you have 10 new Facebook messages that show the little number in the corner. Right, right. You can turn those off. So I was driving with my mother-in-law, and 
and I, I told her, I'm like, yeah, every time you get a Facebook notification in the email, it's not a personal message. Like, you don't have to treat it as if someone's messaging you. They're right. not. They just posted something. Right, Like right. one of your thousands of friends, right. right? So you don't have to keep up on all of it. Use it. We talked about this um, in a previous session, but use it intentionally, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. go in to Facebook intentionally, not because it's beeped at you 10 times that right, you know right. one of your friends has posted some pictures. You want us also to link tech use with positive behavior. Yeah. Explain this idea. Yeah, so rather than framing um, in family life, framing like technology's bad, screen's bad, you can only have an hour. Um, I, I read an article that really resonated with me that says link, link it like, you, okay, you need to read an hour to earn an hour of TV or an hour of screen time. Mm -hmm. So link it with something. So for me personally, I'm like, okay, hey, if you're gonna watch DVR and catch up on all your shows, get on the treadmill. So I DVR it down by where our treadmill is or the bike. So I'm exercising while I'm watching, catching up on things. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Gotcha. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's with a positive, um, behavior another mm -hmm. positive thing so it's not just mindlessly scrolling right. through. or fold the laundry I tell my kids you you want to watch the show or you want to watch this on the iPad fold laundry while you're doing it all right all right <laughs> it also comes down to I think a simple concept that sometimes gets lost and that's that people should always come first right whoever you're in the room with is number one and I think that's the biggest um, distraction or the biggest downfall of, of so much technology is we forget who we're at dinner with, who we're talking mm -hmm. with, you know, we're, we're kind of checking and it really sends a message that this is more important than you and we need each other. Right. We need each other. We need eye contact. We need touch. We need actual interaction in addition to our, uh, our our tech interaction. People take priority and look up. Yeah. Good messages, yes, Julie. Thank you. Thank you so much. What's for... coming up at DrJulieHanks.com? Well, um, just Wasatch Family Therapy. We're still there for, for counseling, and we have offices in Davis, Salt Lake, and um, Utah counties. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much.